What's up everyone, it's Brace from Langchain, and in this video, I'm going to be showing off the new generative UI computer use chat UI we have here, how it's built, uh, and then also the generative UI um, computer use package that we have powering it. So I can send a request like, please visit Amazon for me. What this is going to do is it's going to uh, spin up the graph and send a request to OpenAI's computer use model, um, and it's going to say, hey, I want to visit Amazon. What that's going to do is OpenAI is going to send back an action. As we can see here, the first action is take screenshot. And this is so the model can get an idea as to the current state of whatever browser VM is running. As we see on the right, we have a live view, right? This is an iframe showing exactly what the browser is doing uh, and we can inter interact with it. So uh, there's a slight delay, but as you can see my hovering uh, is being rendered. This is all running on Scrapybara, uh, which is the provider which the computer use agent uh, from LangGraph uses. Uh, you can get an API key for free uh, and they give you 10 hours of VM usage. So this is running the browser, but you can also run uh, a Windows instance or Ubuntu. And then we can see on the left, uh, it generates this computer action, takes screenshots, uh, that then is sent to the Scrappy Bar API. It executes the action, and then we generate this computer output, which is typically just a screenshot to show uh, what is the output from the action you just took. So take screenshot, click, as you can see it clicked on the search bar, and then type in amazon.com. Uh, and now we can hit enter if we want, right? As I said, this is a fully interactable VM, so I can hit enter and it'll actually go to Amazon. And then it says, before I navigate to Amazon's website, would you like me to proceed? I could say yes, I could interact with it myself. Um, and then the UI allows me to do some other things. So I can hit the expand button, right? If I ask it to do some sort of like very long running task where I don't expect it to come back to me for more information, I can just hit full screen and then just watch the VM uh, as it runs live. I can also hit this minimize button. And what this is going to do, right, pausing instance, it pauses the instance from the last known state. So the instance will now be paused um, and we're not going to be using up any of our VM credits from Scrappy Barra. And then if I hover over, uh, we can see, um, yeah, so if I hover over, we can get the option to terminate or resume. Uh, terminate is going to just permanently kill this instance and we're gonna lose all of our progress. Resume will start it back up from where it was left off. As we can see, the image that's being shown as the VM is a little bit different from where we last were. That's because we just take the last known computer output um, and show that to the user. So uh, we don't just take a screenshot whenever you pause the instance, but instead we uh, find the last known computer output because that's the last thing that the model saw. Uh, and we render that uh, as the uh, state of the paused instance. So I'm going to terminate this. Uh, and now we can actually jump into the code or first let's look at a diagram as to how it works. And then we'll jump into the code and see exactly how it's built. So we have this high level diagram and we can see there's a few parts. The first is the user input, right? Uh, go to amazon.com. That gets sent to the computer use agent, which has two main nodes, a call model and a take, take computer action node. The call model is what's generating the uh, computer actions, right? So click or take screenshot or type. That then gets sent to the take computer action node, which sends that action to the Scrappy Barra API and it actually executes that action on the VM. After the action has been taken, it loops back to call model, and this will just loop through until it decides it's done when it sends you a final output, which in our case is before I navigate to Amazon's website, uh, and so on. After each of these uh, nodes execute, it sends a generative UI um, component to the client. So we can see after call model executes, it sends a computer action gen UI component, which is this computer action component. And then after the take computer action node executes, it sends an action output gen UI component, which is the uh, computer output with the screenshot. The way we're actually doing this in the code is there's a way to specify a before and after action node. Um, so before an action is taken, it'll run our before node, which just gets the last action and sends this UI component. And then after an action is taken, uh, it sends the action output uh, gen UI component. So that is how it works at a high level. Now we're going to want to clone this repo locally, jump into the code and see exactly how it all works. So you're going to want to find the GenUI computer use repo. I'll add a link to it in the description, of course. Uh, copy the git URL, clone that in your, inter in your terminal, install dependencies via PD pnpm install, and then set the two required environment variables, which is the OpenAI API key for calling the computer use preview model, and the Scrappy Bar API key for actually spinning up VMs. Once you've done that, you can open in your IDE and we can jump into the code. So once you've opened your IDE, we're going to want to navigate to the index.ts file inside of the agent directory. This is where the code for our computer use generative UI graph will live. If we scroll down to the bottom, we can see we have this create CUA, create CUA uh, computer use agent <coughs> function, and we're passing in a few configuration uh, arguments. This create CUA function, we import from the LangGraph CUA package, which is the pre-built package that houses 
the basic uh, call model and take computer action nodes uh, and loops around that with some additional logic before and after for some other configurable fields. Uh, and we call this function in order to get the graph back. And this is the graph that we register with the langgraph.json file um, and run inside of our langgraph server. So you can see right here, we're passing in a few different configurations like recursion limit of 150 because the way the graph works is it calls this node, then this node, and it loops back. Uh, so we want to allow it to loop many times over. Uh, the Langgraph default is 25 and that would typically get hit. Uh, so we want to update it to be something larger. You may want it to be even larger than 150 if you have a super long running task. We then set the timeout hours to 0.1. This means uh, after 0.1 hours, um, we want to timeout on the Scrapper Bar of VM instance so that it isn't just running forever uh, after our users leave the uh, chat session because uh, we don't need to be having that VM running if there's no action for 10% uh, of an hour. Then we pass in a state modifier, which is just a new graph annotation, and that's because we want to have generative UI in this computer use agent graph, and the basic uh, computer use agent annotation does not have a UI field uh, because it's not a generative UI package. So we can extend this by just adding this UI field with the UI messages type. And then if we pass that to state modifier, it's going to merge our graph annotation with the base computer um, uh, use agent annotation to allow us to have this UI field uh, inside of our state. Finally, we have our before and after nodes, which I explained in the diagram. These are the nodes that are updated before and after taking computer action. Uh, and they act like just like any other Langgraph nodes. You, we, you can see we have our state, our config, and we return an update. Now, what we're doing here is we are using the typed UI function, passing in config in order to get this UI object back. And this is how we push and uh, remove or modify UI messages from the state. Then we take the very last message. So this is the before node. So it's going to run before a computer action has taken, which means that the last message should be an AI message uh, containing the computer call. So we take the last message, and then we get any tool outputs from this last message. Now, before we push anything to the UI state, we want to make sure that there is a VM button and an instance uh, UI component in the client. So what we do is we iterate over all the messages in the UI list, and we check to see if any of them have the name of render VM button. So that's just the name we pass here when we push a UI component uh, to the UI list. Uh, and it's also the name that you use when you register the components in the component map. So uh, if has render VM button is true, that means that there is already a render VM button in the UI. That is this button. And then the uh, instance component is this right here, right, showing us the actual live view of the instance. So we want to make sure these are there. And if, they're, if the instance ID and stream URL are true in the state, that means that the stream has been created. Then we want to say, okay, if there's no instance frame, make sure we push that to the state so that we can actually render the live instance view for the user. Of course, tagging that to the last message in the state. And then we do the same for the VM button. If it's not uh, there already, we want to make sure it gets rendered for the user and tag it to the last message. After that, we iterate over all the tool calls, right? These are the computer action uh, items right here. And for each tool call, we want to push a computer use tool call uh, UI component to the client to show the user what action uh, the model is requesting um, be taken, passing in the tool call ID and the actual action, once again, tagging the last message uh, to this UI component. For the after node, it's very similar. We take the last message. This executes after the computer action has been taken. So this should always be a computer output, right? This component with the screenshots. So we say, get the last message. And if it's a computer tool call, then we want to push a new computer use tool call message, passing the tool call ID and the screenshot, of course, tying it to the last message, which is that tool call. So that is how we define our graph. Now let's jump into the instance component, because there's something special we need to do here in order to get access to a, um, a React package we have for modifying and updating query parameters, as well as the toast for when we want to take an action like minimize, uh, cancel, or expand. These need React context providers. Um, but the way GenUI components works, they don't just get access to the React context that I have in my you know, global Next.js layout. So we need to do something special. Let's look at how we do that. So before I talk about how you use uh, React packages that require React context in LangGraph generative UI components, I want to do a quick refresher onto how you would do this with just any old React app uh, or Next.js in this case. So, you, so as you can see, I'm in my layout.tsx file um, and I've wrapped my children with this Nux. I'm gonna call this Nuxt uh, provider, 
which I import from Nux Adapters Next app. Uh, so when I wrap my children with this, any single component inside of this uh, child React uh, node will have access to the React context from the Nux adapter. <clears throat> the thing with Gen UI components is they're loaded externally uh, from this React app, so they're not able to access the same type of uh, context from the parents like you would with an app like this. So in order to make it work with a Langref Generative UI component, you need to do a couple things. The first is in your langref.json file, where you want to register these uh, React context providers and then the actual packages which you'll be importing the code from. So as you can see, we have this new UI config field shared, and then it contains a list of the imports uh, or the import paths to these components you want to be able to use inside your Gen UI components that require React context. So we have Nux, Nux adapters, um, and then this for my toast. Then inside of the actual JSX file, thread slash index.tsx. So this is the actual JSX file, which I render my external component, right? We have this load external component from LangGraph, and this is the actual generative UI component I want to render um, on the page. So inside of this file, I need to call this experimental load share function, passing in the import path, right? Nux, Nux adapters, and then the actual value from that import. So the entire module that was exported. So you can see, I just import star uh, from that path, and then I pass it in with its corresponding import path. Once I've done this, I'm able to then just use these React packages as I would um, inside of a normal React component inside my Gen UI component. So once I load the uh, shared context, I can go into my agent UIs. Uh, we can say, open up this hook, which I use inside of my um, generative UI component. And we can see I'm loading this toast I'm not doing anything special inside here. Uh, it looks the exact same as any other React component. Uh, but since I was able to uh, load the shared value here and then register it in my langref.json, uh, when this component is actually loaded on the client via that load component, uh, JSX component from the langref package, it'll have access to the React context um, from the packages that I registered. If we look inside of the window manager buttons, we can see the same thing. I'm using the use query state from Nux. I'm importing it uh, normally, I'm not doing anything special here, and it just works because I registered the Nux provider in my langref.json. So as a recap before we end, I'll send another request and we'll talk through it all as it goes through. I'm gonna ask it to find me images of the Langchain logo. It should hopefully Google something along the lines of Langchain logo. So as we can see, it loaded up with the very first action the model's requesting is the take screenshot, so we can get an idea of the current state. Uh, we see the screenshot output here. Uh, it's then going to click, right? So it's going to click. Ooh, my hover might have messed it up. Nope, all good. So it clicked on the input, um, and then hopefully after this, it's going to be able to actually uh, type in something like Langchain logo. Um, and then once that's done, we'll come back, because of course this still does take a while uh, for these models. But when it's done, we'll see the output, um, and yeah. So as we can see, it was able to successfully find some Langchain logos. And the really cool thing about these generative UI components is we can kind of step through exactly uh, what the agent saw and get a better idea as to why it took uh, different actions. We can see the very first one, just a blank Google page, the initial state. It then clicked on the search bar, right? After that, it typed in Langchain logo. Then we see it hit enter. We can see some images uh, on the all tab, but it then wanted to navigate to the images tab. So uh, it waited because typically after a search request, uh, it can take some time for it to load. So it called the wait, um, got the output, and then it clicked on the images tab. And that showed us a bunch of different uh, link chain logos, just like we asked. Um, and through these Gen UI components, we we're able to sort of trace back uh, through the agent's progress and see exactly uh, what it saw and what action it took based on that input. So I hope you all learned something from this. Of course, the repo is open source. Um, we have a link chain computer use package uh, which you can use to build an app like this in JavaScript and in Python, uh, which just wraps this with the script bar API, which makes it super easy. You just send in a message and it takes some sort of computer action for you. Uh, the repo and all these packages will have links in the description. I hope to see some super cool agents being built with them soon.